I'm just going to say, I can't believe I'm getting ready to run a hundred to one ratio oil through a thousand dollar chainsaw. I've had a fair amount of people ask me to test this oil. Um, one thing I will say, this was curiously expensive. I did look up on the website and this says it was $5.99 and plus tax it was $6.35. Uh, I believe MSRP on this oil is like $4.29. So that's why we call them Land Rapers Supply. This 3.2 ounce pouch makes two and a half gallons. Um, let's get into this. I would like to start by thanking Michael Forrest. I've actually learned a lot from him. I didn't really realize he had a YouTube channel. He does have a website. It's called Dragonfly75. Sorry, that's so grainy. Um, you should check that out. If you ever want to take a deep dive into two-stroke oils, uh, he has dedicated many, many, many years to uh, this kind of re research. So I do find it in interesting this is the actual opti page and you know just general descriptions about the oil um it makes no reference that they are pre-mixing or pre-measuring this for 100 to 1 i mean it doesn't say anything about it you know there's just how it's packed and everything else and they claim where are we at here um this works in anything no matter what um smoke-free. Uh, so I guess it does have some form of ethanol stabilizer kind of thing. Um, and it also mentions Optimizer, which is a fuel stabilizer. So you've got that going for you. Um, here is their PDF on this particular oil. And I, I do find this funny because th this would be my kind of people. So Jesso FB rating, no longer recommended for best performance in new engines. Um, that's interesting because I can't think of very many two-stroke oils that are still rated FB. I got to be careful. I think the legal department at Steel has gotten a whiff of some of my trash talking. But they go on and I see this oil rating at ISO ED, EGD++. And I couldn't find anything on it. Like I went to ISO and there's only EDG or EGD. There's no plus plus. When I search this, they come up with nothing on their own website. So whatever that means, I don't know. All right, here we are on the dragonfly75.com website and interlude two stroke oil is listed here. Uh, you got the specifics of the uh, viscosity, viscosity index, flashpoint. Uh, there is a note here um, and it says, <laughs> note the listed viscosities are too high for what's to be expected from a mostly group one and group two oil. Um, so they are using some form of additives to get the viscosity up. And we'll talk about that in a sec. I got a general idea you know, I'm just a dumb old redneck. You guys bear with me. We'll get to cutting and and uh, breaking the saw down in just a sec. I just thought this was important to find out what a eutectic solvent is. And basically, they're using additives uh, instead of using uh, traditional friction modifiers like uh, zinc and phosphorus and stuff like that. So I normally mix at 40 to 1. So if we're going to mix up 700 milliliters of gas... I would normally measure out 17.5 milliliters. Now, obviously at 100 to one, this is really simple. I'm going to put 700 milliliters of gas in one tube, and I'm going to put seven milliliters of this magical oil, and then pour it in my tank. All right, here we go. There's my 700, and there's seven milliliters right there. Um, it's kind of thin. It's not horribly thin. Um, geez, that's barely enough to change the color of the gasoline. I am not looking forward to this. I'm nervous as a three-peckered goat. Well, I got a full tank of gas. It sure is easy to see the fuel filter in there. Um, I need to remember to mix up a little less. The uh, 400 only holds 
looks like 550 milliliters of gas. My 046 that I used to do oil tests with uh, would hold like 700, 750. Anyway, let me get uh, oiled up, put a fresh bar and chain on here, and uh, we'll go do some cutting. All right, let us give this thing a rip. Just kidding. Be surprised how long it takes to run out of tank of gas look at all this cutting a couple of cuts here there's a foot deep in sawdust right there all those cuts i got cookies galore down there and here around here and yeah i let it idle a couple of times cut some small stuff cut some big stuff but uh that brings me back to right there. I must have checked four times. But anyway, there's a whisper of fuel left in there. It did not run out. Let's go back to the shop and tear this joker down. Just got back to the shop. Everything's cooled off. I went and got my hair did. Um, I did want to make a note of this. I pulled the top cover off, and this filter setup is actually very good. I like these. The air injection seems to do a nice job. You hardly see anything down in here. Um, let me uh, tear a little bit of this down and then we'll actually do the, the uh, have a look inside part of the video. All right, so if you just pull your muffler, it's always a good way to tell how you're doing, but it only shows part of the story. Let me see if I can get a little bit more light right there. Yeah, that's too much. Ah, come on. You know, you don't see any extra oil there, but it's certainly, you know, it's shiny. And um, I guess you'd call that adequate. We'll see how the rest of this goes. All righty. I got everything pulled away. Beautiful day here in South Carolina. Sun's out, birds are chirping. Spring is here, baby. All righty. I've been thinking about getting a fresh piston for this. I've had this saw and this was, I made two saws into one and the magnesium piston was stained from whoever used the oil or from whatever oil they used before. So we can grade that on a curve. But every time I uh, reassemble this, I clean the top of the piston and um, just buff the combustion chamber, at least a squish band, so that way we see, I, I'm actually surprised. Let's come take a look. All right, so here's our, uh, let me grab my flashlight, what you got? So we got some carbon in the uh, squish band, not too terribly much, but it's there. Um, nothing hurt. Looks a little dry right there. And, uh, 
let's take a look in here and i'm actually surprised there's actually some oil film still left in here crank has i i'm sorry i didn't see this coming so uh, it doesn't burn as clean as i thought it would especially at 101 uh, you can see this is all new and I'll be, again these are one test wonder type tests but this all started with do i have enough lubrication and i'd say yes i don't think it burns that clean but there's i mean you tell me uh-huh looks like a little scuffing right there you know it's it's always the full whole picture to uh Think to yourself what you're going to comment about this, and we'll come back and take a little deeper look. All right, so here's what the intake looks like. And that's really curious because that is going to be where, here, let me back you out so I can illustrate. So you'll have fresh cold gas and lubricant going in and going into the crankcase. And this should be the most coolest lubricated area on the saw. Um, you know, I did notice, so, you know, that right there is actually, you know, not just some dirt or something like that, that won't wipe off. And then if you look here and I thought about this, that's, you know, not the color of the oil that I just mixed up. What we've got are, you know, a little bit of wear mixed in with that oil you know you can kind of see it let me back out just a little bit if i wipe my finger on this you know you've got i wouldn't quite call that schmutz but that's other all right so here yeah, let me do some final thoughts well that's your opti 2 test um not surprising. I just don't think it's a great idea. You know, even as, as much as I talk up how good Sabre is, I still wouldn't run it at 80 or 100 to 1. It's just too skinny. Um, I have heard of guys that run Opti and, you know, they're not buying it like in a pre-made pouch. Um, I, I think they got some squeezy bottles or they sell it by the quart or pint or something like that. And they mix their own. Some of the guys said they do about 60 to 1 that seem to like it. Um, I think there's better choices out there. I don't know. I didn't like what I saw on the piston skirt or on the intake side of the piston. So, you know, we, you saw it, I saw it. We just talk about what's inside and that's what we do right here. So if you want some more of that, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and thanks for hanging out with me today. Y'all have a good day. Thank you.